Vince Sarah, 912 Sarazen. I uh, just wanted to take a second to talk about uh, Shark Park. Uh, for me, it's uh, kind of a very personal issue. Uh, I have a two-year-old daughter. I do like to go down to Shark Park a lot. Um, I'm very glad to see that um, the city is actually going to hopefully move forward on doing something with Shark Park. Um, I know there's been a lot of discussion in the community, and it kind of seems like there's, and I don't know if this is the city's plan, but it seems like there's a plan to kind of redo Shark Park entirely. I was down there today taking a look at it, and um, I know that there's repairs that need to be made, but it doesn't seem like the entire infrastructure there needs to be replaced. It kind of seems like you could do some repairs, you could fix some of the slides, add a couple of the swings in there. And I don't know if you're looking to, to, to add on to it, you could do that, but I think if you did some resurfacing and redecking, it really could make Shark Park nice again. And I just kind of wanted to add that comment to help out. So thank, thank you. you very much. Tonight. Thank you, Vince. Yes, Paul? <clears throat> Vince, if, if I may say something, in February, we, as a governing body, if you probably remember, you were probably here, we approved a bond to replace the park. And right now, there is discussion going on where we would have the option to do what you said as well. So we're going to look at all those options tonight. And I did have the opportunity to go down to look at the project down in Ventnor on Somerset Avenue on the beach. It's a yeah, leathers it's project. Nice. It's yeah. gorgeous. Absolutely. And if we can upgrade ours to that level, that would be better than a replacement. Okay. And, and I just didn't know financially what the city could afford to do. And that's no. the only reason I was bringing the point up. We, but I'm very happy to right. see us do something. We yeah. have. Um, appropriated $150,000. And um, I agree I agree with you and Lisa that, um, and I may, I'm sure there are other members too, but I actually was part of the project that built the first one um, in 1999. And there's a, there's a lot of investment in, from the community in that park. And I've had many people contact me and talk about, they, they want to keep that concept they want to keep the names that have uh, were involved in the first um, building project, and um, they they want enhancements. So all that I think is possible, and I think everybody's on the same page that going forward. Um, I think we can make make it work, and I think we can do it maybe in phases too, so we can get it done quickly and open for the summer, and maybe add some other things, you know, going forward. The first step is meeting with Leathers and getting them down here to evaluate um, the park and then to give us some ideas of what can be incorporated into it and then give us the building plan, which they did the last time. They set up the construction project and it was one of the most amazing things that I've been involved in um, to watch an entire community come out and work for several days uh, to build that park from scratch. I mean, it, they started with nothing. People of all different skill levels too. I mean, you had some people who uh, could, could use a sanding block and yet other people who could uh, use a router and, uh, you know, a saber saw or whatever else had to be used uh, to build it. You know, I think that the key is to move it <coughs> at this point as quickly as we can. Um, I think Shark Park, getting that fixed and, and um, completely restored and then also restoring some of our other areas. Um, I also have spent some time down there uh, looking at it again and, uh, you know, a couple of times. And, and, I, and I've seen um, some of the information uh, that has been posted uh, on um, local websites. People have a lot of good suggestions. Also, uh, talking to uh, people who use the park. Um, my own feeling is I, I think we can keep the infrastructure that's there and um, to Im greatly improve on it and um, hopefully do this in, in a fast manner so that we can get things up and running before uh, summer and um, hopefully um, enhance what is there but also add some other things that, that perhaps have uh, changed significantly since 1999 uh, that are options for uh, playgrounds at this point. And, um, you know, we, we have, I think, the, the financing in place. We have a great core of volunteers already, and there are the two ingredients that you need to make this thing happen. Um, I think we should use the funds or part of the funds that we've appropriated. I, I don't think we'll have to spend $150,000 to do this. 
and I think we should use the labor that has already been offered by the volunteers through Leathers to make this happen. Um, I think the, the community, as I've already stated, likes what is there in concept and, and certainly the equity, um, the sweat equity and a lot of good people who volunteered a lot of money initially to, to put this thing in place. Um, needs a major uh, sprucing up in that area, but also um, a lot of things added to it. And, and you know, one of the things early on that we, we looked at when the park was built was um, the pressure treated lumber. Um, we need to look at ways to minimize the amount of that that is in that area. And I think the composites have actually gotten a lot better since 1999. Um, and there may be some things that could be done with the composites that, that weren't available back then. And um, I think the first step is getting leathers down here as quickly as possible. And I appreciate the, the Recreation Commission and, and to all of that, but I, I think that we need to, to move this thing forward. <coughs> um, you know, we don't want to get bogged down in, in the process. Uh, obviously, we want the commission involved, but um, there's, a, there's a good group right now that is interested in, in volunteering and getting this thing moving, so I think we ought to take advantage of that. And the, the mayor is correct. Jeff does audit us for our safety measures as far as the playgrounds go to make sure there's no splintering or the rusty nails or um, rusty hangers and so forth. That's, in fact, why some of the items are down from the Shark Park right now because they weren't meeting the inspection at that point. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I just want to say that Council received information in their packets, a lot of information about the leathers, because I know we talked about that at last meeting, and that seemed something that was desirable to Council. Um, we also wanted to show some pictures of other playgrounds, just so you have a comparison. The price between leathers and the other playgrounds equipment aren't that much difference. The difference really is in the labor. Um, the other equipment of the same sizes will be about ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 more because they come assembled whereas the leathers would need to be assembled through, you know, hopefully volunteers if we go that direction. But what I really need to know tonight is if we want to move on with leathers because we already met with some of the other playground equipment manufacturers. The reason I held off with the leathers is because for them to come down and meet with us just to consult us $1,100, and I didn't really want to go that direction unless we know that that's the direction we want to go as a group. Well, the question and is, with that, I can get that meeting done quickly. But can we do this process without uh, putting it out to bid because of the, the cost associated with it? Is no, it we easy? would have to bid it, but we could um, get started in the process, meeting with Leathers and seeing what's but really needed. It depends on what you want to do. Leathers is a, an engineering, architectural type of a professional service. I don't believe Leathers has a state contract officer. Right. So they, they could, as a consultant, I'm sure that that's not a problem. And they're the only ones that would allow community involvement to the depth that we're talking about, right? No, any of them would uh -huh. allow some assembly. But I think Leather, Leather is the way that the last Shark Park was mm -hmm. built. And there have been some um, new technologies in the industry. They're using different wood, like a composite wood, mm -hmm. than they did before. So the splintering is not much of an issue. Before, yeah, our right. biggest issue was maintenance. It was very expensive. This doesn't need as much maintenance as the past wood that they used. In other communities, they had some arsenic in the wood. We luckily didn't experience that. So, uh, you know, I think if people like the same thing, Shark Park was built 17 years ago, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, if they want to have the same look as Shark Park, it's Leathers that does that. So but there are some other nice parks. The, I'm sure have the plans from the original project, so we'll be able to come down and Kind of makes sense to start with them, since they did the original to, to kind of give you an evaluation of what you have there and how much it would cost to upgrade it. Well, uh, they've, give, they've given us a, 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 an estimate. Is, that, is this their estimate? That's their cost price list. But what I believe that Johnny wanted to do with meeting with them is come down to assess the the current condition of the park, mm -hmm. what we actually can keep remaining, you know, and how we would move forward to build it, and a more, for, not a formal cost, but a more uh, formal idea of what the cost would be with but, what's needed. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sure they're using the new technologies and they are, they're build, still building parks. Um, as Councilwoman McClay said, I believe they did the one in Ventnor. They did. Right. So that, 
you know, for $1,100, you may save a significant amount mm -hmm. on materials going forward if you don't have to <coughs> rebuild an entire playground and you can use the pilings and the other part of the infrastructure that's there and, and some of the things that are already built that are still good, that are still usable and, and workable. I mean, it, it would be kind of ridiculous not to spend that money just to get an evaluation. Then you can make a real decision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other part, and I don't know whether Leathers does this or not, but those picnic tables and that whole area, we really need to address as well. Mm -hmm. they, they've just kind of worn out. Um, so, and, and I'm sure there are going to be a lot of suggestions from the public. I think it's a good idea to go to the Recreation Commission. I, I think that's, that's certainly something that, I mean, that's why we have a Recreation Commission to kind of mm -hmm. consult on these matters. But I, I think it, we should try and get Leathers down here as, as quickly as possible, at least to evaluate mm -hmm. what's there and, and look at what the possibilities are. All right, uh, is council okay if we um, spend sure. 1100 yeah, yes. and move forward? Okay. John, will you um, re reach out to others and see if you can schedule something? Uh, something else that I'd like to bring up now, and it includes, it concerns Mr. Howard. There's been um, a lot of complaints in the area that um, about security in that area. There's a basketball court adjacent to it. And um, young adults and, uh, you know, hang out there a lot, and they've made life a little uncomfortable for some of the people using the park. And apparently in the evening, there's been some vandalism um, off hours at the park, and um, it's affected the use of the park as well. So if um, just a heads up, that, that could start to be a concern, looking what, you know, we can do in a way of, uh, of dealing with that up front. 